Okay, any more questions? We also now have time for general questions, I believe, but if uh, someone wants to ask something about indices first, now's your chance. Okay, then we'll uh, stop the presentations here and carry on to the general questions that uh, you have posted in the Google Docs. And I'll just keep this open. Um, so questions for Tuesday, including a simple struct with header only getter setters is problematic in CUDA because the functions are not declared global or device. Can Alpaca work around this problem? Um, someone from my colleagues actually answered this in text already, uh, but maybe you can rephrase it here on the uh, video conference. Uh, yes, uh, that was my question. So the idea was to try and get uh, root structures inside uh, a kernel and uh, just the getters and setters of root uh, do not have uh, the, uh, do not have any hook. Actually, there's no, uh, there's no defined hook in this uh, library. So it's an external library. The data is usually like that. Uh, so it means we, we would have to hack in some uh, some uh, some macro in front of the functions of uh, this external library to, to get it run in the kernel. Uh, it, it's a general problem, uh, not limited to Alpaca, but I was hoping you had a hack for that. Okay, maybe Sergey or René can answer that one. I'm not yeah, too sure. So, yeah, so yeah, so that's indeed a more or less general problem. So the issue here is that if you want to run GPU, so let's say this CUDA or HIP, then uh, like these models themselves, they force restrictions that the function that you call should be should be with special uh, specifiers, right? So there is no way Alpaca can like intervene in between, right? Because it's a backend requirement. So if you if you just do it with Alpaca code without any specifiers, you are still able to use Alpaca CPU backends, uh, the open POTDV, but it will not compile for Alpaca GPU backends. But once again, I, I just feel there is nothing that Packer can do in that reason. It's, it would be exactly the same if you tried to call this uh, CPU side code from CUDA, right? Um, so yeah, so I feel if, if that's the problem, then maybe Alpaca cannot really uh, solve it automatically. Yeah, thank you. You're muted, Stefan. Ah, uh, Jan, sorry. Oh, okay, that's, no, I just talked for nothing. Uh, so uh, what I just said, we have many more Q questions on the list, but we'll postpone them to uh, Thursday because that's what, that will, they will actually talk about Qs. Uh, they are already answered in text for those that are really interested in Qs, but uh, for the general audience, we will cover them in Thursday. Apart from that, are there any other questions that are not written down yet? So, but that people still need answered, or do you have any troubles with your installation, uh, running the example, getting uh, understanding the example, for example? Okay, then uh, I guess we're done for today. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, so uh, just as a quick uh, point, so there was like some very good points asked in Google Docs about the synchronization types in queues, like uh, by uh, Hadrian. So if you want to, we could continue discussing it with voice, which maybe is easier than on uh, Google Doc. And also there was one issue created during <laughs> during the call that there was a problem in Mac OS. Uh, and like one, one, one of the things we are still investigating and for another thing, uh, there was a slight shortcoming. The example is now fixed for macOS. Okay, good. I just pushed the, the change.
Um, maybe another question. So, uh, about uh, grids this time, on topic. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, 2D data whose size is not a multiple of your block size, what do you do? Do you uh, emulate it or do you forbid it? If the underlying API does not support it. No, no, but uh, like is the question about the workload distribution? So how to how to distribute this work between threads? Uh, no. Or is it a question about no. memory buffers? No, it's about the kernel execution configuration. So let's say that uh, I will type it in parallel in chat so that you have numbers. You have. Um, maybe uh, 16 by 16 blocks mm -hmm. and your domain is like uh, 201 times uh, 248 yeah. okay okay i see okay so yeah so that's a fairly standard well issue or uh, thing uh, so there are a couple of ways to approach it so the way that we demonstrate so far or like we'll demonstrate in this workshop is the most uh, straightforward approach where you just do one like as many threads as you have work items. So in your case, it would be like 201 by 248. Uh, and um, so, and how you do it is that you normally will fix your block size. Uh, yeah, let's say 16 by 16, like you wrote. And then you compute the number of blocks as a ratio and you take the upper integer part. And then inside of the kernel, you just check, you take this, you get your thread index, and then you just check whether this is within your metrics bounds or not. So that would be the most default approach. Uh, then alternatively, uh, you could also do a more generic approach where you you do not rely on on number of threads being equal to your number of to size of your buffers. Uh, in this case, inside of your kernel, you will have a loop. Uh, that's also like kind of how good applications sometimes do. Right. So then inside of your kernels, you just have a loop over elements with a uh, normally with a stride that's equal to number of threads. Uh, and in this case, you just write it generically so that your kernel doesn't depend, like it will uh, be correct with any configuration of certain blocks. So you mean you use linear indices, indices and you do the conversion yourself, right? Well, you don't have to do to do. I mean, linear not it depends on the application, right? So if you do work with matrices, then maybe it's actually easier to, to stay with the with two dimensional indices. Okay. That's not the main point. The point is that. Uh, you could write it in a way uh, that uh, you write inside. Of, so you can write it in a way that um, a kernel does not assume that the number of threads is equal to your number of work items to do. And then you need to write it more generically. So then inside of the kernel, you just have a, for, a loop. And you normally just, the for, you start with the index that's equal to the thread index. And then your stop condition is while your index is less than the size of your buffer. And then the increment of the index is just equal to number of threads uh, overall. Okay. Uh, I, I could I could make like a small sample in the yeah. Google Doc or in the yeah chat because it's just a common annoyance with GPU API, so it's interesting to see. How yeah, 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 exactly. Approach. So it's also like how I think like also speaking in CUDA, like also people I think do one of these two approaches most often. Yeah. There is a third approach by OpenCL, which is that the API does it for you, but I don't think CUDA supports it, right? Yeah, I mean, as in, I'm not familiar with this. So and even for OpenCL, I think it's OpenCL2, not uh, 1. So. Ah, OK, OK. OK. Thank you. OK, hey, any more questions? Um, I have another question. Uh, is there any way or plan to to control the vector units in the CPU through Alpaca to map the indices to, to them or somehow? Uh, there's no direct way, so you can't. Uh, so you obviously can use CPU intrinsics or so inside your kernel, but then you will sacrifice portability. Uh, the way we recommend is using a loop inside your kernel as you would on a normal CPU code and just loop over the uh, number of elements that you uh, can define in your uh, source code. So if I'm opening the Hello World kernel here, you have in line 73 the elements per thread. 
I hope you can see that. Yes. And uh, this is set to one here, and we all, uh, usually start with one because that's the common approach. But if you, you can also set this to uh, four or eight or 16 or something, and you, then you can loop over the number of elements per thread in your kernel. So this, could, uh, this is a good way for the optimizer to put this into SIMD registers. OK. OK, thank you. And a side note on, on that, uh, we have currently a PhD working on better utilize or easier also utilize the vector unit. But this is also a problem what uh, uh, you have this COCOS that you rely on the auto optimization of the compiler for that part. Okay, maybe I can point in the past I've been working with the this Intel ISPC compiler, which uh, somehow programming with that is very similar to programming with CUDA. So maybe there is a way to, to achieve uh, both things so, uh, through, through Alpaca or through some common interface. Yes, we are working on that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Does this mean that uh, you always have to change the elements per thread if you want to switch between CPU and GPU? Uh, you, you don't have to, you can. So you can also leave it at one and just launch a number of CPU threads that uh, uh, works on exactly one element. But uh, it really depends on your algorithm and how it uh, translates to ideal CPU or GPU patterns. Yeah, I've worked a lot with auto vectorization, and by now the compilers are decently smart. So as long as you write simple code, not many branches, no function calls, it's all going to do a uh, nice vectorization. So it would be nice to have this um, kind of automatic. Yeah, this is kind of an optimization problem for the compiler. So uh, and what happens here internally with Alpaca kernels is that they are somewhere placed into an open MP loop, for example. And if, you, if your kernel is already quite simple, uh, the default kernel will already probably be vectorized or uh, otherwise optimized by the compiler. But there may be more complex kernels where this uh, isn't the case and the compiler can't auto uh, auto, uh, automatically use SIMD registers. So in this case, it might be a good idea to use elements per thread and insert the loops into the kernel yourself. And okay. so yeah, thanks. just to adapt, yeah, so that's also what we try to do, as a, I think I already mentioned yesterday, so like in PGPU, what we do, we have a central particle traversal parallel of four, which is just specialized in two ways. One is for GPU versus target loop, and one is for CPU versus exactly the two-layer loop that is for vectorization. Uh, so yeah, so I think the reasonable way is just to have it in a smaller loop, and then you can optionally add a pragma on PCMD for or whatever your compiler wants for utilization if you need it. And I would actually, upon also working with this for many years with compiler utilization, I, I, would, I must say I have an opposite opinion from you. I think they're still extremely, extremely bad utilization. If the code is not trivial inside, then it's horrible in my opinion. Hey, any more questions? Maybe a comment uh, about someone saying that uh, this element per thread setting must be switched from one value to another between the CPU and GPU. Actually, even on the GPU, it can be a good idea sometimes to process uh, multiple elements per thread if your threads are very short running. Uh, yes, yeah, that, exactly, that's true. That's what I was trying to also, that comes back to the answer to uh, Hadrian's question, right? So if you do this like for loop inside the kernel style, then of course you will have multiple multiple items of work per, per GPU thread. That of course makes sense. Oh, I think I will create maybe myself like a Google Doc entry for that question. Oh, oh there is already one. I think I will just try to clarify the points there in the answers. Oh, we have a new question in the docs. Yeah, it's it just put on the on the bottom of the list. That's why I also didn't, didn't see it originally. 
Ah, ok. Okay, are there any more questions? I guess not. Okay, so thank you very much uh, again for today's uh, presentation and, uh, and teaching. Um, I guess uh, I, I propose we, we, stop, we stop here then and uh, we reconvene tomorrow at uh, 